I'm Amy the Bunny Lady, and this is my partner, Elusive, Ellie for short. High five. Good job. Good job. And today we're going to dispel some of the common myths about rabbit care so that you can take better care of your rabbit. If you are new to our channel, welcome. We give tips and tricks for how to make sure you have a happy and healthy bunny in your home. So if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscription button and the notification bell next to it so you never miss any of our weekly videos. So the first myth I have about rabbits is that they are small pets. Rabbits can actually be quite big. Like as you can see with Ellie here, she's not tiny. Like she's not a Big. She's actually an average size rabbit. She's not big, big, but she's like six pounds. She looks really big compared to me because I'm also tiny. <laughs> but an average size rabbit is usually somewhere around five to six pounds. But really, rabbits can end up being much bigger than that. There are many, many breeds of rabbit that can end up being 10 to 15 pounds. So that's even the same size as a cat. And there are even a couple breeds of rabbit that can be 20 plus pounds, which those are not ones that are common, but you'll see headlines about Flemish giant rabbits, which is the, the largest breed. And they can be gigantic. I think the largest Flemish giant was more than 40 pounds. So rabbits can be pretty big pets, but most people, when they get a rabbit, they'll expect the rabbit to be, you know, maybe two pounds, like a really tiny pet. When in reality, there are only a few breeds of rabbit that are going to be that small. Part of this misconception comes from the fact that the wild cottontail rabbits that we see out in the wild, at least in the U.S., the wild cottontail rabbits tend to be pretty small. They, they're usually only like maybe two to three pounds. So that's what people will expect of domestic rabbits as well. They've also been bred for centuries to, you know, come in various different shapes and sizes. So we end up having an average-sized house rabbit that is much bigger than what people expect. A lot of people believe that rabbits smell bad. This might be because the more traditional way to keep rabbits is kind of outdoors. A lot of people even think of rabbits as more farm animals than they think of as house pets. But the reality is rabbits are actually very clean animals. They spend a lot of their day, like cats, uh, licking themselves and cleaning themselves all over. Usually the only time that a rabbit is going to smell is if A, they have some kind of health problem, or B, they are kept in an unclean enclosure. Because rabbit urine does have a scent to it, and if it is allowed to build up, like their enclosure is never cleaned, their litter box is never cleaned out, then the smell will build up. But if you are good about making sure that you keep their enclosure clean, try to keep them healthy, then rabbits will hardly smell at all. Honestly, rabbits smell a lot less than most dogs do, and dogs are generally considered house pets at this point. So if you're worried about the smell of a rabbit, then really you just have to do a good job of keeping their area clean, and you don't have to worry about it. Because of the way that rabbits are paired with carrots in movies, commercials, there's like the Bugs Bunny character always eating a carrot, people believe that carrots are a staple in a rabbit's diet. The reality is that carrots actually are not that healthy for rabbits. It is okay to give a rabbit a piece of a carrot, like small amounts of carrot, as a treat every once in a while, but it really shouldn't be a part of their main diet. You see, rabbits have a very sensitive digestive system, and if you give them too much starchy or sugary foods, then it kind of messes with the, um, the balance in their gut, and it can end up leading to some serious health problems for rabbits if they eat too many of these foods. So. For your rabbit's diet, you actually want the main part of their diet to be hay over here. <laughs> that teddy bear is so, so aptly demonstrating. <laughs> you want it to be hay. And then you'll want to give them leafy greens, so fresh leafy greens, things like romaine lettuce or herbs like parsley and cilantro, uh, arugula, things like that. That will be the second main part of their diet. And then just like a little bit of pellets every day, not a whole lot. You can check out my Rabbit Diet 101 video for more information on that. I'm not going to go over all of the little details right now. But for the most part, you want to make sure that you only think of carrots as treats and not a staple in your rabbit's diet. Another common myth that I see, and this is from very well-intentioned people, is that rabbits will die if they ever get wet. So every once in a while, there'll be a video that goes viral of someone giving their rabbit a bath. And you should not bathe rabbits. 
But the common reason that people will give is because if you put a rabbit in water, they'll go into shock and they'll die. Now, don't get me wrong. You do not want to give your rabbit a bath. It's actually bad for other reasons. <laughs> for one, it puts your rabbit at a much higher risk for hypothermia. See, the way rabbit fur works, the way their coat works is once they get soaking wet, they kind of hold in the moisture. They don't dry off very quickly. So if they're wet for long periods of time, it limits their ability to self-regulate their body temperature and they're more likely to go into hypothermia because they just can't dry off fast enough. This is, of course, a, more of a problem in winter than in summer, but how, depending on how windy it is, it can also be a problem in warmer weather. The other reason that you don't want to give a rabbit a bath is actually because their skin is very delicate, and when it gets wet, it gets even more so delicate. It is much more likely to tear. A small cut can end up actually being a very serious wound for a rabbit when their skin is, is uh, wet. So, you don't want to bathe the rabbit. However, water can be used in other ways when you're not soaking your rabbit. For example, in the summer months when your rabbit is really hot, one of the ways that rabbits will regulate their body temperature is with their ears. So giving them a little spritz of water on their ears or behind their neck can actually help them to cool down a little bit. It's not going to kill your rabbit to put a little bit of water on them. In addition, some rabbits, whether they're disabled or obese, have a health problem that causes them to have poop kind of collect on their butt. In these cases, while you can try to spot clean them, sometimes you need to give your rabbit a butt bath. You'll fill a bin with a small layer of water and you'll have to wash your rabbit's butt occasionally if they have this health condition. You do want to avoid getting your rabbit completely wet for the reasons that I mentioned earlier, but using the water in this way as a tool is not going to just outright kill your rabbit. So, to reiterate, don't bathe your rabbit. That's not good for them. They can keep themselves clean on their own, but water as a tool in other ways is not bad. Another common misconception that people hold about rabbits is that they are easy to care for beginner pets. People will think of them kind of like a, a gerbil or a hamster, the kind of pet that you get when you're just kind of figuring out how to take care of a pet. And the reality is rabbits are a lot of work. <laughs> They're kind of high maintenance pets. They're more work than cats for sure. And while they don't need to go for daily walks the way that dogs do, the rest of their care actually would be on the order of caring for a dog. They have very specific needs that you need to take into consideration on a daily basis. And they're not the kind of pet that you can just get and leave in a cage all day because that, that is a very sad life for rabbits. Rabbits are very active. They need a lot of time to exercise. Rabbits are very social, so they need a lot of interaction with people or other animals or other rabbits. And rabbits can have very serious health conditions. And the problem is that it's difficult to know when a rabbit is sick unless you are paying attention to them on a daily basis. So it's very important to do regular health checks to make sure that your rabbit is staying healthy and you don't need to bring them in for uh, a ch an emergency vet visit. A lot of people don't realize this, but rabbits actually do make sounds. Now they are very quiet pets. Most of the sounds that they make are actually very quiet but they do actually make sounds. You might notice when your rabbit is happy that they make this kind of buzzing sound almost. I've also heard it called honking or I think it sounds kind of like oinking. So it's a, it's a sound that your rabbit makes when they're happy. <laughs> it's hard to hear sometimes. It depends on your rabbit. Some rabbits you will hear it more than others, but I have found that that's a very common sound that you will hear. The loudest sound that you will hear a rabbit make is their thump. <laughs> so even though it's not a vocalization, it is a very loud sound that rabbits can make. It sounds kind of like a textbook thumping against the ground. And it's when usually they'll make this noise when they are either very scared or, you know, angry or frustrated. It's kind of jarring when you hear it. It's not what you would expect from this tiny fluffy animal. And you know, there's always gonna be some occasion where they're gonna go into a thumping storm in the middle of the night and wake you up. And, you know, even though they're usually quiet pets, they can be loud when they want to be. There are a number of other sounds that rabbits can make as well. For example, they can growl. It sounds more like a squeak than a growl, but once you hear it, you know what that is. <laughs>
But they can make a number of other sounds too. It's just a matter of you know listening and keeping a keeping a close ear out to hear those tiny soft sounds that rabbits make, and then understanding a little bit more about you know their personality. There's also a misconception that rabbits don't live very long. People will think of them as you know other small animals, other small pets. Maybe like three to five years, I think, is what the popular misconception is. However, the reality is most breeds of rabbit can live to be about 10 years. It's still very obviously depending on your rabbit, but usually 8 to 12 years is a pretty normal range for a house rabbit. Larger breeds of rabbit do tend to have a shorter lifespan. Part of this is because they are more likely to have cardiovascular problems because their little heart is doing a lot to keep their big body going. But uh, they can also live longer than people would expect. So when you're getting a rabbit, make sure you really think of it as a long-term commitment. It's not going to be just a couple years. You really want to think of your rabbit as a 10-year commitment. That way you can be prepared to live with your sweet little bunny for the long term. So I always recommend that people spay or neuter their rabbit, but Understandably, people get very worried that will spaying or neuter such a small creature be a dangerous procedure? Like people hear horror stories of bringing their rabbit in to get spayed and then something goes wrong and their rabbit dies in the process. But the reality is this is a lot rarer than it's made to seem. It's usually a rare case of the negative gets news, whereas the positive just doesn't get mentioned at all because that's just what is normal. The reality is if you bring your rabbit to a vet who it has specialized in rabbit care, so if they have experience with the procedure for rabbits in particular, then there is a less than 1% chance that anything will go wrong. And this is both for spaying and neutering. Neutering is generally considered a safer procedure because it's not invasive, but even for spaying, if you go to a rabbit veterinarian who has experience in rabbits, there is a very, very small chance that anything will go wrong. And if you compare that to the very high chance that your rabbit will get uterine cancer, if you don't get them spayed, then it really is worth it to go and get your rabbit the procedure. The dangers of the procedure have really been blown out of proportion, and it really is important for you to get your rabbit spayed or neutered. Some people have the belief that if you get a rabbit when they're a baby, it'll be a lot easier to bond with them. Like a baby rabbit will be more likely to hang out with you and just be cute and cuddly. But in my experience, that's really not the case. In fact, young rabbits, baby rabbits, are much more likely to be really active and less likely to sit still for any long period of time. In fact, people end up getting disappointed when they realize that their baby rabbit just will not sit still in their hands, will always struggle to get out, and they'll not want to interact with you as much because they're too busy being curious rabbits going around and exploring. So really, if you want a rabbit who you can develop a quicker bond with, a baby rabbit's probably not the one you want to go for. I actually recommend going to an animal shelter, meeting the rabbits to learn their personality, but adopting an older rabbit, usually by the time they've reached like two years old, they've kind of calmed down a little. They're much more willing to just settle down and be pet while you sit next to them. So if you're looking for a rabbit that you can make a quicker bond with, I definitely recommend going for an adult rabbit. Sadly, a lot of people believe that domestic rabbits are the same as wild rabbits. They'll think that it's okay to let a domestic rabbit out in the wild because, you know, they'll then just behave like wild rabbits and survive that way. And the reality is, this is very far from the truth. In the Americas, this is so far from the truth that wild rabbits that we see, the wild cottontails, are a completely different species than the domestic rabbits that we have. Not only are they a completely different species, but they also have a completely different lifestyle. So the, our domestic rabbits come from a species that are burrowers who build, who dig tunnels underground, whereas the wild rabbits in America, the cottontails, they are actually surface dwellers. They take refuge in underneath bushes or possibly in hollows that have been left by other animals. And our domestic rabbits would have a lot of trouble adapting to the different environment. On the other hand, in Europe, where our domestic rabbits come from, they are actually neurologically very different from wild European rabbits. So they're still considered the same species, but 
they've been studied neurologically and the receptors that would cause rabbits to respond quickly to uh, external stimuli, to potential threats. Uh, in domestic rabbits, they are much more dulled. They don't fire up the way that they do for wild rabbits. This means that they're not as prepared to face the threats that they will find in a wild environment. It's also the case that in Europe, even if they can find other rabbits around, it is highly unlikely that they will ever be welcomed into a wild rabbit colony. See, domestic rabbits come from a very territorial species of rabbits. European rabbits will attack rabbits that are considered outsiders. So basically, if a domestic rabbit is let out into the wild, there's a very, very tiny chance that they will be able to survive very long because they do not have those wild instincts and they would have trouble finding any kind of help from wild rabbits. If you found this video useful or helpful in any way, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I do hope we will see you next week.